Uh, with Brasco coming at the lowest rate of 105,000, Tolar at 138, excuse me, LNI at 138, Tolar at 139. Um, the project is being funded um, by Federal Grant 90X.346-00, by 80% and 20% coming from SPLOS funds. Any questions, Helen? Um, Chad, or am I going to see any of these out in a little bit in the unincorporated area? There will be a number going out in that incorporated area. Um, we'll get you actual, an actual list, and what we'll also do is get you a copy because we've programmed out the next 50 shelters to be installed, and we'll um, get you a list for that as well. I just I see so many people standing by the poles, and you know, especially when the weather isn't good. And, you know, in a lot of ways, they're coming the longest distance, and sometimes they're waiting the longest periods of time in the interim because of the distance. And it would just be very nice to have some amenities for those that are standing out there in the heat or the cold. Okay. Well, you question. Right, go ahead, Bill. Um, I have noticed, you know, some new benches and other shelters that are out, so congratulations on moving forward on that. Do we have any, any that that we still have that need to be installed elsewhere? The latest ones that were being installed, I think, um, um, were finished installed um, either last week or were finished this week. Okay. So that will wipe out Our all inventory. of the inventory old shelters. So this is new. And so the thing that's interesting about the new shelters is that the new shelters will include all the amenities. Mm -hmm. So they'll have solar lighting, uh, benches, um, so they'll be the, the nicer of the ones that we're getting here. Okay. So all the sombreros are gone, all of the, the, the <laughs> 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 I would have taken those out well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is all new. Uh -huh. and, and, and once again, I would assume that these will be placed based upon the criteria yes. that we've established. Yes, the passenger amenities guideline that the board approved. Okay. No, we don't want Helen. Uh, you you don't want those sombreros Look, because you'll that. have people I mad. Have that 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 a pole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just if you need to get rid of the sombreros, put they, them they, in they my They're already out. Okay. 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 Right, wait, I, ha I have one question. No, oh, I excuse me, uh, Howard. Sort of a follow-up question for Chatham County. What what is the criteria? Because I know when I drive down Route 17, I go by some areas I think of, I probably have a lot of people right. traveling, and there's there's really nothing there. In fact, on 17, there's not a lot of shelters at all. So, when you say 17, Route 17, I, I start, start say Chatham Parkway and go south towards 204. So, I in really there, see. I think we put in probably about 10 or 15 stops have been approved along the um, Ogeechee Road, Quaco mm -hmm. Road corridor in there. And so, what we're doing is we are um, developing entire quarters um, is kind of how we projected this to occur. So, is William here? Where are the, where do we have the, because we just completed, where are these, where are we completed the um, latest group of shelters at? Um, the latest group of shelters were um, by Mall Boulevard, Mall Way. Um, they were also um, on Capricorn and Janet. Um, there were two on Capricorn. Um, um, and then we have some proposed stops on the 17 that include the Gigi Channel Parkway and my work. And the 20 that we have, where are some of the general locations? Um, mostly on Route 24, I'm um, sorry, 25, 17. Oh, uh, what, what streets are those? Oh, what streets are those? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Abercorn, um, Ogeechee Road. We have a couple, well, we were proposing some on Augusta Avenue. Um, so that those, some of those were not ADA accessible. So we really um, focused on the streets that had ADA accessibility and um, also high population density ridership. But I also want to say on seven, Route 17, I see a lot of, not the complete package, you'll see a bench, mm -hmm. trash can, no, no canopy. So it seems like, at least on the unincorporated section, I think as Helen said, these people are walking. Okay. They're riding a long way to get to these stops. Mm -hmm. And some of them, you know, are fairly frequented stops. There's a big section there on 17 where you've got the uh, 
expand a community of living? I, I know that there's drivers. Right. Right. Okay. And there's nothing there for them. I mean, they're just okay. out in the street. Yeah, so part, part of our next 50 stops um, definitely was um, Bohichi and Quaco Road, which we saw a lot of um, old Tom Burroughs and um, old benches and trash cans. And so I've um, been taking the liberty of going out, taking pictures of the amenities, and also measuring the ADA accessibility. So we're going to try to get a report on that as soon as possible so that we can get another list of um, proposed stops after the 50 that are proposed by Mr. Benchy. Mm -hmm. okay. really need to see that. Sorry. Right, let me ask you any questions, Jim. Chad, if, I, if my reading is correct, there's, there's no uh, additional financial cost to us? No, no. Th this is just for the purchase. Right. So the next thing that will come by is the installation of them. Right. Um, okay. And which the installation of them could, in some circumstances, in a lot of circumstances, actually be more expensive than the shelter um, well, because of where we put them at. So US 17, for instance, is a state highway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So given it's a state highway, GDOT requires that we have a separate permit and engineered drawing for each location. And Seriously? Yes, and they're also requiring us to put in, <coughs> because there are no sidewalks, so wherever we put them in at, they also require us to put in sidewalks, um, which has driven up the cost of some of the installations. Let me ask you a question. In all honesty, we're trying to help <coughs> folks. Yeah. And could this not be a state issue that we can talk? I, I hate to see a, an amenity for a bus stop held up because of the cost to the local taxpayers. It's just not right. I mean, I don't think that people are that concerned if it's pouring down rain. Yes, a sidewalk would be lovely. But the important thing is while they're waiting for transportation that they can have a shelter. Right. And, so you know, so I we, just have, we have that option. In the county, so in an unincorporated county, I understand that, that. Can happen. but in I'm this, saying in the, in the city and along state, the city and the state both require. Um, <laughs> How here. much of a sidewalk? Well, if you take, um, but, well, well, you, well, what the state is requiring is that we go mid block, and when we go mid block, that means that we've got to pay you all the way to either side for ADA access. And so it's not like we can put one near a corner, for instance, that, that doesn't affect the traffic with a short stop walk to the sidewalk. In this case, the state's requiring mid-block locations. Uh, if you go to Abercorn and Janet Drive, you'll see that's one of our latest ones today. It looks like a very long paved strip there. And we were required by the state to do that because it had to be mid-block. Well, let me, uh, since you're saying hold it a minute, James, uh, let's see on that about some legislation or something, what we can do with the state, because if you're going to put down uh, a sidewalk that much and uh, everything else is grass or something uh, like that, I understand about putting down the uh, you know, having the sidewalk right there where the particular uh, unit is, but going beyond that, it, it just cost us money, and um, we don't ha always have that much money uh, to be able to add that. Uh, I, I, I think that your point is, is, is well taken and reasonable. Uh, I will be meeting with Carol Comer, who is the DOT head of Intermodal, that handles uh, transit and handles the airport either later this week or sometime next week when she's in town and I will put this on the list as something to talk about because it seems a little odd that what they're basically asking for is piecemeal and spot well, sidewalks that are not connected to anything right. other than the pod that houses the bus stop. Okay, so wait a minute, Ellen, let him uh, uh, change. What's, I understand these comments each person made a comment, what position? What position are we getting a comment from uh, Mr. Ulap from? What, what position? Is He's handling um, some of the passenger amenities um, program on the state highway and state borders. That just started up? A um, couple of months. Huh? Yes, sir, a couple of months. Okay, how about that name? So let me ask this question. Yes. If, if there's already an existing bus stop, 
just say i'm going to pick whitfield avenue way out there if you want to put a roadway amenities on whitfield which is a spur of 204 even though there's an existing pole and people are using it whether they're um, ada or not we now in order just to put up shelter in a bench we have to do hey we have to have a we have to have an engineering firm draw up a site plan we have to submit the site plan to the state for approval and any comments and then once those come back we actually have to go through the process of getting a permit it becomes a separate each one of these projects becomes a separate individual construction project. I understand. So my question would be, Mike, not to inflict any hardship on anybody that's handicapped and needs to get to these. I'm talking about the ones that are already in existence right. that they're using. That all we're trying to do is add shelter and a place right. to sit. I think that that's reasonable. Now, the new ones that we're bus stops that we're going to come up with then maybe we do need to be in compliance but the ones that are already there that are already being used all we're trying to do is make them more user friendly and this is uh, is penalizing this organization from providing amenities to those that need them when the bus stop is already there right seems so. like there seems like there could be an opportunity for provision to grandfather those stops yes. that has, have historically been in place. That and that be may, be the, may be the best way to approach that. Okay. I, I would be uh, happy with that. Go ahead. I, I, I'm hearing some of the financial implications of doing these, but at the same time, and I would defer to Ty on this, but I believe that if you do a substantial alteration of an existing structure, you have a proportionality rule under the ADA, so I don't want to spend a lot of our time trying to advocate a waiver of federal law. Well, that's, that's what ADA requires. Right, and, and part, part of this is going to be to understand exactly what the requirements are. And to your point, if you are upgrading a structure, then yes, that requirement should apply. But if there's not a structure there, if you're dealing just with a telephone pole that's there with a, a sign next to it that says bus stop, that may be a different issue. So there are going to be shaded nuances within this. Yeah, I, I was just gonna, gonna piggyback on, on what Blaine was saying. I mean, I don't want us to be seen as trying to, I don't want I, us to be seen as trying to water down the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I mean, we don't want a two-tiered system, you know, where because the stop's been there a long time, we don't have to make it ADA accessible whenever we do make any changes to it and the like. And you know, we have to recognize that those sidewalks those requirements are for a good reason. I mean, they're not just for people who are using chairs, but people who have difficulty walking and, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's important that we be, you know, accessible to as many people as we possibly can. And I realize there's added costs when we do that, but, you know, that's sort of what we do. But what I might recommend is that we do some investigation, understand a little bit better uh, with Eli what the regulations are with Ms. Comer, with DOT, with their intermodal folks and then come back and outline exactly what the requirements are and why and what flexibility there exists, if well, any. Well, well Mike, it, it, to that same vein, as part of our passenger amenities guidelines, we've already accepted this as a board, so what we're doing is consistent with our policy. I, I just make note of it because um, our policies in compliance with the law is just not an inexpensive venture to go out understand but it would seem to me it's worth looking into to see if if the existing stops that have no amenities that are being used anyway that we can just add the amenities i'm not trying to get us in any trouble with being in compliance with the law i'm just asking because of the expense if a bus stop that's already being used um, could be upgraded without a whole lot of expense for the tax and, and, and we can provide that. And then that the other thing, and Wayne, help me with this. If someone is um, ADA needs special, they they're start they're using paratransit anyway, maybe or help me with that. But we're trying to move people yeah. from paratransit to mainline, right. and if we don't 
make sure that we remove all the barriers. I understand. But it's just something I think we should look into. So to that same degree, one of the things that you see around town is the new bus stops that are going up. And one of the reasons the new bus stops are going up is because the old bus stop signs had the permanent fixture on it that showed that all the stops were wheelchair accessible. The problem is in Chatham County and Savannah, all the stops are not accessible. So we are delineating the ones that are accessible stops from the ones that are not. And from an experience perspective, I've had enough incidents where we have put someone off at a non-ADA accessible stop and have dealt with the lawsuits associated with that. So we're trying to clean up that process. So Helen, what you have stated, that he's got, yeah, that they're going to look into it and then bring it back to us and then get with our legal staff and all. Wait a minute. I wanted to ask a question. I remember some time ago, Mr. Chatham Area Transit received anything from the state financially in support of transportation like they do at Atlanta? No, ma'am, not yet. Still have not done anything? Still not working on it. What are we doing? Are we asking any questions? I mean, the person that represents us from Fall Chatham Area Transit seems like to me that should always be something on that agenda. I mean, you know, if you tell you one time, no, I mean, you know, I would be in their face every time. Well, then it's something that has been on the agenda repeatedly. This year we were successful in having $75 million in bond funds put into the budget, and the application period has not opened yet. We're anticipating that will be sometime in mid-October, and we'll run through January the 31st, and the CAT staff is developing a number of applications for that funding that will be for capital projects, and I believe for maintenance projects as well. I think it can be used for capital and maintenance, and we're very hopeful that the governor will agree this next round of budget talks to put an additional $100 million in the budget. We know he's going to put another $100 million in there for bridge repair as he did this year, this fiscal year. We're hoping that there will be a $200 million package as there was this fiscal year with $100 million of that coming to transit. You might say, well, you said $100 million and $75 million. $25 million of that transit money was set aside to be used to lure the Volvo plant, and one of the plans that we have moving forward is to see if we can't access that $25 million to make us whole to that $100 million figure. Oh, good. Well, that sounds good to me because the reason why I ask that is because I just didn't want us to just, you know, not continue to seek additional help because if we're going to meet the demands, you know, and the needs of our people, I mean, we certainly are going to need some help somewhere. We can't just keep doing what we're doing. Mary? My question was someone mentioned the city's role in all of this. I'd like to hear some details on that. The city has pretty much the same requirements as the state. As it comes to developing these stops, the city is requiring engineered drawings. They require permit inspection process. So it becomes, in effect, a separate construction project. What about the infrastructure improvement? Who's responsible for that? Anytime we're doing a development with the shelter, the city is requiring that we undertake those costs. Will you draft a letter to that effect? Sure. And where are you expecting that money to be done? And I will probably give you a call to talk to you about it in greater depth. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion on the floor for approval of this. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next item, disposal of revenue vehicles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff is requesting board approval 
to dispose of three revenue vehicles and their associated parts. Um, the three vehicles in question is vehicle 0503, which is a 2005 vehicle with 67,000 miles. It is a cutaway van that provides service in the urban circulator for Liberty Shuttle Parking Garage and then two fixed route buses, 3020 and um, 3003. Um, these buses are beyond their 12 year, 500,000 mile useful life um, and are not part of our proposed rebuild program. Therefore, we're requesting approval to dispose of them. Um, and our disposal um, policy is already set by the board in terms of auction the amount of money, where it goes. If it's in excess of two thousand dollars, it's two thousand five thousand here. In excess of five thousand, then we have to um, return a portion of that money up or a portion is credited back to FTA. If it's less than five thousand, we use it um, in our local budget here. So moved. We have a curiosity question. Are these the three that were involved in the fire? No, these are not. There'll be a loss. Uh, we have a motion on the floor for the disposal of the revenue vehicle. Uh, all, in, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Uh, all opposed? Mission uh, for that disposal is approved. Next, satellite task call. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff is requesting the board issue a task order for the planning development of proposed CAT satellite development. Um, the proposed CAT satellite development will be done in accordance with our um, board approved TOD policy. Um, it will be for the composition of both our satellite operations maintenance facility, bus wash and adjacent parking, um, potential park and ride, any potential commercial development that would occur, as well as the initial planning for a uh, multifamily residential development. The deliverables um, on the project um, is that we would utilize um, existing SPLOS funding for the planning and set aside. Um, the, the funds would also be used in preparation for the state grant um, grant application with a deliverable date to be completed on this um, by the end of January. It is of note um, with the approval of this task force, it would require a special meeting um, by the CAP board because in the um, executive director's authorization, while I have been authorized to act on behalf of CAT for federal funds and federal grants, I have not um, on state. So the state process would actually have to come back through the board for approval. And I think that is an advantageous way to go until we establish some type of long-term funding mechanism. So once this process is completed, um, it would have to go the board would have to have some type of workshop or slash meeting to discuss the process. Now this is uh, where Helen and Howard went to Denver, Colorado and brought back that information but the transportation uh, of people are doing. This is a prime example uh, starting off uh, with that uh, situation um, like they did in Denver. And that information that we got from both Helen and Howard was very uh, good and positive about something that we can start here. And hopefully, uh, we will bring in the chairman of that Denver uh, Transportation and also uh, uh, asking him to bring two others that have been instrumental and getting that uh, particular project that has some 33 cities involved in it now. Uh, Helen? Well, my question is when are we going to bring in Chuck and we're, we're to make this? We're, we're looking at the, um, the first part of the year. Um, it's part of the process of setting everything up. Um, we're looking at bringing him in and we have a, um, a Council commitment from either the Secretary of State or former Secretary of State, excuse me, Secretary of Transportation or former Secretary of Transportation to take part in the process. So it's a matter of um, um, being able to wrap it up. But if we're looking at doing this by 
starting this, you don't think we need to get them here sooner? This would be something separate. This is, so we are programmed and budgeted this year mm -hmm. to start the planning and design on the satellite location, satellite operations and maintenance okay, so facility. That's what so this is what the process was going to be, but we also, as part of the location identification, we decided to expand the scope of that to look at, well, if we're already going to make an investment in land acquisition, development, planning purchases, uh, we'll explore the possibility of doing a more comprehensive approach as opposed to piecemeal. Well, because of the huge impact yeah. on this, I want to make certain that we do enough advertising and that we get with all the or organizations that would benefit from this, the Chamber, yes. the Planning Commission, the elected officials, um, everybody that would need to be involved in this and yes, have it. So the, the way the task order is specified, the MPO has conducted a study mm -hmm. on the um, on seven potential park and ride locations. We're evaluating five of those potential park and ride locations to as opposed to relocating the operations center into an industrial park, we would look at locating along one of the proposed um, um, park and ride developments. Um, so we're doing a site evaluation for each one of those, doing a complete environmental work, um, bubble chart, schematic designs, outreach, um, the whole aspect will have to be accomplished over the next four months. Now, and this is also by uh, the state being involved in it yes. also, uh, so that would help it along uh, with this project. Yes, sir. Do we need to set up a meeting before our state representatives go into session to brief them on this? Well, what we would, what we're doing is, um, so I'll kind of move the executive directors report up so okay, so <laughs> no it's okay um, because we've hired um, Squire Patton and Boggs so as you know traditionally we approve the legislative agenda in at the December board meeting right. um, so we've hired Squire Patton and Boggs so we have to do in the month of November the onboarding process so as opposed to committee meetings we're going to have a, a committee workshop excuse me, a board workshop of the combined board to see about establishing, drawing some consensus on the legislative agenda, all the projects, the approaches that we'll take during the legislative process. So that will occur during the, within next, second Tuesday in September, excuse me, second Tuesday in November, is first or second Tuesday in November. Beverly will follow up with the exact dates, but um, that's what we're looking at as part of this process. Okay, uh, I think this is really, really exciting, and I'm, I'm glad that we're going down this uh, this path. Because when you you go to Denver and you see what they've been able to accomplish with these kind of programs, it's uh, really quite spectacular. My question, though, would be: Are we thinking outside Chad County for these parking rides? We are evaluating. Uh, yes, the, the short answer is yes. We are thinking outside. So, one of the proposed uh, parking ride locations is outside of Chatham County. So, I hate to say we're starting with a clean chart. We're not. We're starting with the core MPO study. So the satellite and operations facility may be um, in Chatham County itself, but we're looking for park and ride developments throughout the whole region that we would look for the um, county, the state to support, not just in Chatham County. I think from regionally, that's, a, that's an outstanding. Uh, Very exciting. Outstanding comment. All right, we need a motion on the so floor. Moved. Second. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor and a second to approve the satellite task order. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion is carried and approved. Uh, the mm -hmm. next item, State Legislative Advocacy Service Agreement Extension. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a point of reference, this will actually be a new contract with the Vacuum Firm to provide um, both state and legislative services. Um, we were able to negotiate a um, uh, positive rate 
um, with Squire Patton, which <coughs> freed up some um, um, funds and we were able to um, negotiate a new uh, pricing framework from the Zachary firm to um, lower the rates that were quoted on the um, um, initial RFP. And at this point, staff is recommending the best fund evaluation committee to um, award a um, contract to um, the Vicar firm um, for legislative services of both at the state and local level. Just one question, and I guess it's all right to ask the question if the you're, you're good with working with this other firm? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, we have a very good relationship with uh, I mean, team former building Congressman and Kingston. And in fact, uh, if you will recall, we actually put in a joint proposal to work directly with them. So the right. framework already exists to do that, and we look forward to coordinating with them. Well, I just, I mean, some of these issues are intertwined, yes, and I are. just want to make certain that we're good. And I'll make a motion to approve them. All in favor, signal. Oh, wait, excuse me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask one question. Setting aside the fact that you're in the room, Mike, I, mean, <laughs> I need to ask this anyway. Procedurally, there's not an issue with a firm bidding on its own and then bidding in conjunction with another. No, because we set the um, we set the RFP up as a A, which would be federal, state, and local; a B, which would be um, federal; or a C, which would be state and local. So you had some flexibility yes. built into the RFP. We had other vendors that also bid it on parts and then turned around and bid on a combination. So okay. I don't feel like the way the RFP is set up that there will be any issues. Okay. Any other questions? Need a motion on the floor. I'm going to move it. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? It has been approved. Next, presentation. Um, no presentation today, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And then your executive director's report. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, fixed art ridership for the month um, was 331000 28000 a slight increase of 0.9%. Uh, All right. Turn it around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I hit bottom. I noticed that. Uh, All right, way back. <laughs> Um, so in terms of fair box recovery, um, we had 18.25, the complaints um, 5.4 down slightly, no preventable accidents, um, passengers for regular hours consistent at 21. Um, fair box recovery for paratransit remained at 2%, complaints were up slightly, um, productivity were, was up from 1.8 passengers per hour to 2.1 um, passengers per hour. Um, overall, in terms of our performance against our standard, um, again, productivity um, exceeded standard. Our efficiency costs uh, per revenue hour was below our standard. Safety exceeded our standard. Um, quality service um, in all areas we exceeded standard except for an area on time performance where our goal is 90% and we are at 70, um, 78%. The board asked me to come back with um, comments on our travel training program. And so we have been conducting travel training program. The um, CAT staff has worked with um, Williams Courts, um, Rosa Sharon's, um, and the River's Edge Department. Staff was involved in the training trainer with the Savannah Center for the Blind and Low Vision. And we'll continue to provide travel training. And we're also going to incorporate as part of the appeals process on our functional assessments as well. Um, November 4th and 5th, we will be conducting um, state audit, excuse me, safety audit. Um, so just so that the board is aware, we have our financial audit, but we also do conduct a, uh, a safety audit as well as a maintenance audit um, on the quality of our maintenance status of vehicles. Um, safety audit is going to be conducted um, November 4th and 5th of this month, um, next month. Um, state funding update, the state uh, toll road authority still has the financial wherewithal in place. All the grants um, for 
in this state, um, $75, $75 million bond program are due by the end of June, January. As I said, the task order process, that would require a um, special board meeting um, probably somewhere in, the, in January for the formal approval of our grant applications and programs. Our anticipation is that we will award, we would present several grants on several different categories that will cover everything from major developments um, to possibly streetcar, passenger amenities, vehicles, so on and so forth. So we'll bring all that back to the board and with some area of prioritization. Given that it is a new program, um, and it's somewhat different than the way the state has, um, um, somewhat different on the state level than compared to how it is on the federal level, um, it's um, my opinion that the board should play a more active role in this process um, and actually pass a resolution at some point um, recommending our grant application to show some type of um, board backing consideration as part of this process. And so, well, do you want to see about that resolution or do you need to put something together that brings we'll, back? Well, well, we'll look at once we um, have the boards okay in the direction we'd like to go, we'd like to put together a um, resolution as part of the process. Okay. And one of the things, too, uh, Chad, let's make sure that, uh, you know, nothing is reduced for our Chatham Area Transit Authority uh, because we're the second largest transportation uh, in the state of Georgia uh, for our mobility. Yes, sir. in our transportation and um, uh, you know because there have been some real small uh, units uh, you know in some of the uh, counties and they uh, have been talking about you know getting more uh, but uh, what you have worked with and the other uh, uh, entities has been really good because we want them to stay like that instead of having some kind of reduction um, well, if, if I could ask a question, on the, these travel training programs, what do we actually do? I mean, do, do we simply just place brochures or do we, do we like have people come together and... Well, the last uh, several times we've done group travel training. Uh -huh. We've actually, uh, this is a facility, uh -huh. we've had a PowerPoint <coughs> presentation, we've gone through uh, um, how to catch the bus, our uh, trip planner, yeah. showing things like that. Um, we actually take questions from them. They'll ask um, specifically, I'm here, how do I get there? So we have tried to teach them how to use the trip planner, be aware of the environment, uh, landmarks, things like that. And, and do we go, like, do we go to any of the schools and do these we kinds have, of things? We have, we do. We, we always participate in career activities at the schools. Uh -huh. I have um, probably three more for the remaining of this year. Uh -huh. And we will go to the schools. We, do, we don't do travel training when we visit primarily for the career day, but uh -huh. we familiarize them with, with the bus, how to catch the bus, rules of the bus, uh -huh. and more often than not, we're invited back uh -huh. in by individual teachers. And, and it, have we done anything at Armstrong recently along these lines? I, I, was, at a, I was at a breakfast the other day, and, no. and it was a, a, a young man who actually is from England and, was, and is now at Armstrong for the year, and, and he was unaware. That, that we had a bus system. Uh -huh. We have not done anything with Armstrong. We yeah. have done with SCAD. We did a yeah. transit one-on-one with SCAD, but yeah. we have not with Armstrong. Yeah. I think Armstrong would be a perfect candidate because we have uh, really our best service, you know, is at 14, you know, up and down. So, uh, yeah, I'm just throwing that out as a, a suggestion. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll the, the, the other question I want to ask was, this on-time performance, we can't seem to, to get close to our standard here. It, you know, is it one out of every four buses is either early or late. Um. Well, that, that's the good part and the bad part. <laughs> okay. So the good part is um, we're not at 53% anymore. The bad uh, part okay. is we're not at 90%. Um, it, it is something that that we're hoping to look for revi um, and refine. We have new routes um, that have gone into place or as part of this process. And one of the hopes that we came out of it was with improving the on time performance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to refine, refine the process in hopes of driving that information. Okay. So, so. 
I think the passage of the education program will help a lot with that. As much of the delay sometimes is because of passage. Well, a lot of it is because of the passage. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good well, program to have in place for that. And, and, and go back to another question. On the resolution, do you have all the necessary partners you need to sign on on that resolution? We Are will. there any uh, we will. entities such as the chamber or anybody else that needs to sign on? We will have it all, everyone. All right, thank you. And maybe I should direct this question to Valerie. It goes back to the tribal training. Are we using existing Eastern Seals Project Action materials so that we don't have to develop them? From we scratch? are, and, and we are hoping that uh, we, it will be included in our bu budget for the next fiscal year to gain some more our Eastern Seal Project Action training. And for Kim and I. Good. Plug it in, girl. Plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the second question was, um, are we using like a mentoring system? Because if we hope to move people from paratransit to mainline, we need to have seasoned riders that maybe have some type of disability that are yeah, trying to implement it there, but there has been discussion among staff, and particularly about um, like Mr. Gilchrist here, who's at Rose of Sharon, who's very familiar with our routes. Um, he would be a, a prime example, ideal person mentor someone that's living already in his building. So we have discussed it among staff. If we could also engage uh, life, um, some of their volunteers or members might be interested in doing something like that. Yeah, because life living independently for, for everyone, everyone mm -hmm. is really a good organization. And I've been <coughs> over there a number of times to speak out, you know, for new people coming in and all. But that's very good. Mr. McGarry is very, very, he's one of our um, biggest assets, I would say, for the disabled community. We call on him often. Okay. I Next. One further comment to make. I really appreciate the way these reports are done now. Mm -hmm. I think it gives us far more detail of where we were, where we are, and where we need to head. I thank you so much for it. I enjoy it. I, I just had one last thing I forgot to mention this. I, I do think it's really good that in whenever we come up against individuals that don't meet eligibility for paratransit, that we are giving them an option and trying to get them into travel training. So that's a thing. You always need to give people choice. Thank you, sir. Just one other question. Is this Please. about the budget for travel training? <laughs> no, this is, no, 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 this is about, you ever think about, I know that y'all have, like, you know, criteria and that sort of thing, but have y'all thought about increasing the the um, uh, number of buses on the 14 at all? I mean, you may tell me we don't have the buses, but but it just seems like that is our, our stellar route, and, and at one time it was 20-minute headways, now I think it's 30-minute. Headways. Have we ever thought about maybe improving headways on that route? Um, yes, sir, we have. <laughs> yeah, okay. we've we'll thought about it. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think our audit is due next month um, to come to the board, and you'll see for the first time in um, as far back as I can think that the numbers will look much improved, and so while we're trying to improve it, we, we understand. We try to improve a number of different numbers as part of the process. So we're trying to find the right balance between 14 um, Terry's budget and travel training. So <laughs> okay. travel training and <laughs> okay. Next uh, unit uh, updates. Uh, this is uh, information only. Service delivery update. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman Curtis. Right. Um, if you would please turn to page two, I do have the pages numbered this time. <laughs> oh, you're up. Um, there was one added item we put on here, which was the senior circulator that had not been on any previous reports. Um, and then um, Dr. Reese did mention a 0.9%. Uh, improvement in ridership mm -hmm. fixed route. Our all mode ridership is actually down 1.4%. If you look, the main driver of that is the water ferry, which is down 9,000 riders. 
Um, the reason for that was we had three events last year in August, one of them being Brewfest. And this August, Brewfest was moved to September 5th, and we also lost one of those other events. So we were down two events for August, so September numbers should be better. Um, but 9,000 riders is, is a huge hit to our all-mode ridership, and that's why we're down. Okay, next. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got it. <laughs> um, so on page four is a new addition that we talked about last month, which is the average ridership for weekday and weekend. And by doing this, we can separate the numbers out and see what's really going on within the routes themselves. Um, for example, if you look at the 25, 27, and 28 on the weekday, those are all up slightly, but if you look at the weekend, they're down. So this helps us focus in on specific times of the week on these routes to see where we can improve service. Uh, let's see, skipping ahead to page eight. I'd like to point out under uh, trip cancellations that our overall no-shows are down 22% and overall cancellations are down 29%. And then, um, can you turn to page 10 for me, please? On the hours and miles by mode, you can see that the water ferry hours of service for August were down 6%, which attributes to the lost events that we did not have this year. And that's, that's the highlights I wanted to point out for you. I'm still here for any questions. So one of the things about giving us all this information is we're asking questions. So what's, what's Saturday and Sunday all about? Almost yeah. everywhere. I hope it's not a commentary on church. All right, <laughs> 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 um, That's certainly what we're looking into. Um, if, uh, if I had that answer, I would certainly present it today. Um, we're certainly going to be investigating looking at that. I'll be working with system development, marketing, and try to find out where we can improve on the weekend. But you're right, it is down. Interesting on this uh, I can't talk. Interestingly enough, at Afton, San Francisco, um, their ridership was down as well um, for the last several months, and especially on the weekend. So they're also investigating that too. So it may not just be a, a Chatham County thing, yeah. but we're certainly going to be looking into and, it. And we do know that ridership is out around the country as well. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the trend that we actually experienced over the past few months, um, it was not unique to Savannah, it was nationwide. So. Um, the slight bump is actually going against our peers are doing. Wouldn't work schedules affect that a lot? A lot of people don't go. We do go. Well, but we also have less service. What we have to figure out is what's different about Sundays now than it was last year. Um, yes, yes. And Saturdays. I mean, both yeah. the weekend days are. Because you know, the ride during the week is up slightly 1.2, 1. Right. 1. So 1. Right. So the weekend that's really the part. Alan. Hmm. Question. Um, do we have to pay more for our employees on Sunday? No. no. We don't. Okay. So I was concerned about that, but 11% for specifically Sunday is something I think we need to really be paying Absolutely. attention to. And I don't know whether overall, because gas is down a little bit, but people are using their own vehicles on the weekends to go where they want to go and not relying so much on public transit. I don't know. But that number really jumped out at me, 11.2%. What we've seen um, around the country is gas prices are the major catalyst for the, um, um, the downward trend in um, ridership. So we've seen that, particularly all of your major metropolitan areas and some of the smaller cities throughout the South. And of course, the other one that we, we talk about a lot that it never changes is the Abercorn Express. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number is just getting to be mm -hmm. lower and lower and lower. Is it worth it? Um, yeah, we've recently redesigned that route a little bit, and we're going to you know, stay with it um, a little longer, but um, we certainly don't want to get rid of it without giving it every possible opportunity to succeed because, I mean, having an express route is, is an intricate part of any transit system, and so, but we're, we're certainly making another effort at it with the redesign and um, hoping the numbers go up. We have
have some facility and infrastructure issues associated with that area. And the, the real challenge is actually finding a suitable location for the park and ride. Um, the location is where I was at before. Um, it's small park and ride, it's a state park and ride. It's often filled up. It's not on the main drive, main quarter. It's off tuck somewhere. So um, one of the things that we're looking at as part of this, this state initiative is improving park and rides. And so while this one may not be fruitful yet, finding the right location on the south side of town, um, because you have level out congestion coming from that way, you know that the market is there. So you have a um, origin of customers the question becomes the destination and making sure the right amenities are in place to support. It was interesting that in one of the forums, the question was asked about parking downtown Savannah. And of course, I put in a big plug for park and ride. So let's get them to some rides. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So two questions. One, are we looking at faith-based sites for park and ride? We have not. For Not example, similar. really large churches, you know, have large yeah. parking lots, and that may be an option that we wouldn't have to worry about improving infrastructure or anything because it exists. The second question is, I can't remember last year, when did we change our paratransit policy? <coughs> was that along about July or? In terms of what? Because I, I was wondering about the reduction in cancellation of no-shows. And did we attribute that to the change in paratransit policy? Well, we are issuing points, um, but we're not, we haven't suspended anybody from the system. But it's, it's also about education, too. It's, it's reinforcing to our customers about how access when they don't show up or, you know, cancel last minute. So um, we've also pushed that agenda as well. So it could be a combination of things. I was just wondering to what extent the, the change in the paratransit policy maybe made a, an yeah, improvement in the numbers. On I don't think that much compared to policy. You know, what? Well, that's why I make my annual uh, <laughs> express from the airport. For <laughs> 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 my monthly comment, I guess. Yeah. Coming through the airport again this month after APTA, the kiosk that you turned around to face the right way and the little brochure you put in it is really good. And when you, if you pull it out and you look at it and you read it, it tells you everything you possibly want to know, except you've got it by gate eight, which means everybody right that down. comes in early doesn't see it. So you're missing all of the Delta flights, and everybody that comes in earlier than gate misses it. And I still had trouble walking through quickly, finding out where it was going to be. If you walk outside, there's no, I didn't see any signs that say, you know, cat stop, cat shuttle here. You see the taxi signs, but I didn't really clearly see the, we where's the shuttle going to go? Mr. French, that there was, I know that there was a um, cat shuttle sign at the airport every time that I've gone there. I've seen it, so I'm just not sure if it's something that they actually place out there, but it does say shuttle. They have a um, standard sign that does say shuttle. I've seen the one that says cat shuttle, but um, <coughs> I have to contact them to see if that's something that they just... Maybe they take it down, because I came in after 6.30, and I think you're not running after 6.30 now? Um, right, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, the last one leaves at 6.30, but um, it is a stand-up um, display that, that they bring out here, so I will look into that to see if that's something that they bring in. And you said it was about what time? I was there, it was like 7.30. Okay. I was just wandering around trying to find it, and I couldn't okay. find it. And the other thing, too, um, if you have a situation with the airport commission, let me know, okay. because the chairman of the airport commission, I've worked with him on some things, and I'd be glad to help with that. Okay. All right? But I'm not traveling next month, so don't worry. I'll be okay. <laughs> 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 so, just, so you just forget no, it for at least a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but and the other thing, the too. You haven't yeah. asked for the app for a while. <laughs> We're right, we're getting more information and our, our books now and all, and uh, we have requested that the pages and a good many of them are numbered. 
but Curtis, in yours, it stops at five, and it doesn't have a number six, seven, eight, or nine. On yours? Yeah, on mine, and maybe mine was the only one like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Curtis is just messing with you. How about yours, James? <laughs> yeah. You have it? Yeah. They just do it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Raise your hand if you're numbered. <laughs> Everybody's numbered down here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Next, financial update. Uh, system development. System okay. development. system development update. Yes, um, Nick Hemholt will give the system development update, and I think he'll be happy that this is his last one. We have our new um, chief of strategy planning development here, um, the ones from the system development committee recognize Adam, so yes, he's been on board about a week now. Wonderful. And so he gets a reprieve from giving an update here, but he'll do it next month. So, you know. So can you tell us what he's going to be doing? What? Um, he's the filled position of Chief Development Officer, okay. so he oversees um, planning, um, marketing, outreach, um, legislative government affairs, um, all the things that fall under the um, System Development Committee. Okay. So he's the Chief that's in charge of that. So he, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I missed it. It's Adam Jambroni. Thank you. And so he joins us from, well, tell him something about yourself since you're up there. <laughs> Dr. Reese, I actually started uh, last Wednesday and uh, so still getting up to speed on things and so Nick's going to walk you through this report. Uh, I have uh, come from having worked with the Toronto Transit Commission, uh, the Montreal Regional Transit Authority and then most recently the City of Milwaukee building their streetcar line. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just started construction, my expertise is not in construction and I look forward uh, to working here on, on the planning. So maybe some of the other bigger projects and uh, this is just getting up to speed so uh, hopefully you'll give me a pass for a few more days uh, but uh, happy to take any of your questions and uh, sort of respond to any of your queries. Well I can say this where we have the monthly meeting uh, where we invite the riders to come and to speak out and all he did an excellent job uh, on that uh, meeting that we just had here a few days ago. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay. Nick's going to give the update. Thank you, Grace. Uh, so, system development update. Uh, some highlights from this report. Our staff continues to serve and work with the uh, Keep Chat and Beautiful group to uh, prevent littering and uh, prevent its effects on our uh, county. Uh, one of the big things we're working on and, and looking forward to is October 26, the fare structure and schedule adjustments that will take place. Uh, this includes a variety of changes, including new schedules, new passes, ticket vending machines, and uh, public education efforts to make sure that everybody is informed about the new uh, fare structure. Uh, on the marketing outreach front, we have been coordinating with uh, Armstrong Atlantic and uh, other institutions to uh, promote the UPASS program. Uh, and you may have seen in Connect Savannah, uh, there was a UPASS ad uh, to, to highlight that for uh, any of its readers. Uh, staff have also been working with uh, Chatham Steel uh, to promote uh, our services to their employees. And uh, finally, if you'll flip over, uh, uh, staff, uh, one other highlight from this report is uh, a uh, TripAdvisor ad. And I don't know if any of you have ever used TripAdvisor, but it's a popular service for looking up information about traveling. And we're starting to starting promote the Airport Express through that means so people can kind of plan that into their trips before they book their flight or just after they book their flight to Savannah. So, thank you. Okay, anything else? On uh, can I just ask one question? Nick? On the, I see it, w we made some presentations at the Georgia Planning Association. Did Correct. you do that? I did. Okay. Yeah. What did you talk about? Uh, it was uh, talking about the partnership with uh, Savannah Mobility Management and, and uh, CAT and how that's working together. So, yeah, good. Thank you. Next financial update. Ms. Harris? Yes. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Financial results for August and your data in your package. Of note, our revenues are down, but um, pro rata, our costs are also down. So, month to date, we show a number that's 4000 better than budget. Year to date, that number is 20000 
staff is, is watching revenues closely to include the PM revenue category. And as we see the variances, we'll adjust our next round of funding so that by year end, we should be on track. The audit numbers were transmitted to the county last week. I anticipate maybe some follow-up questions from them as they incorporate these numbers into their statements, but our part of it has been shifted to the county and that the audit report will come to the board next month. I'll answer any questions you may have about the financial results. Just one quick question. When you said um, that, that they were less than anticipated, was this a goal that you set? It's, it's basically the annual budget. So we're a little off our budget. Part of it is the fact the ridership's down. Right. So um, that, that explains some of it. And we're also looking by category to make sure that there's not any trends we need to monitor. <coughs> we but do. Obviously, you were budgeting conservatively because you came out fine. You're just a little below your projections. Yes. And it's two months in, it's not as concerning. We should just watch it and monitor it and make co corrections as necessary. Okay. How about the taxes that last uh, uh, is due uh, for people's uh, property taxes and all of that? And some uh, sometimes they have uh, uh, taxes that come in before that November, you know, for that last part of it. Has yes, that sir. started coming in yet? We do receive tax revenue every month. August, September, and October are historically our lowest months, where we will receive almost a million dollars in November. In August, September, and October, they were all less than 100000 So cash flow continues to be a challenge, and we're monitoring our cost and, and doing what we can to cover operating costs. But November will be an increase in tax receipts, and in December, will be our largest. It will be close to three and a half million. And with that, we will pay down our line of credit. We'll save back enough to make the January note payment and have <coughs> a little bit left over to help us through the shorter months in February and March. Is there an anticipation? You saved quite a bit of money on fuel this year because fuel cost is down. Yes, ma'am. How do you plan for the next year? We basically budgeted um, the same number because fuel costs can be very volatile. Yes. So yes. we didn't want to lower our budget and, and get caught short. So we kept I the budget stable, why. and as long as fuel costs trend low, we'll have that cushion to cover yeah. any other unexpected costs. I think that's very wise. <laughs> any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. No, sir, Mr. Chairman, we're not going to reallocate fuel money to travel training. No, not travel and training. I've got some of the priorities. Some of it. Travel training? No. But one thing that you mentioned the travel uh, situation is that we have found out that if we look in the past and what the history has been done, it has been really. Uh, positive uh, for our system uh, because we can see, you know, uh, for example, <coughs> take this Denver trip. I mean, the, the information that has come back, you know, and all of that. I mean, uh, we get it going, especially with this satellite thing, uh, you know, and expand on that. We will, uh, uh, you know, we can talk everything else in the state of Georgia uh, when we have that in operations will take a number of years to do that. But anyway, this is the beginning of that and it's going to really help us and that's terrific. Okay, old business. New business. No new business. Anybody have any new business? Okay. Well, I guess I'd like we to make a comment. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to commend uh, Dr. Reese and, and the uh, Chatham Area Transit team. Being one of the senior persons here and who have been working so hard for years trying to make a difference 
in transit. Now I can feel assured and I can feel very good about the direction in which Chatham Area Transit is going. It's been a hard, long journey, but I want you to know that each and every one of you have done an awesome job and I don't have to worry about Chatham Area Transit anymore because we are moving in the direction in which we need to go. And I just wanted to say that because, you know, it takes all of us to make a difference. And when you get a team of people who are willing uh, to work together uh, to make that difference, this is what it's all about. Let's take Martin Luther so King Jr. Boulevard, Savannah. <laughs> 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 that is wonderful. Is that the response for what she just said? <laughs> 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 it went along with it. So <laughs> that, that, that was right on time. But I, like the the I, like I just wanted to make those <laughs> comments at this <laughs> time <laughs> and to let you know how I felt about it because it's been a long journey and I'm, I'm I feel very good about tra uh, tra Chatham Air Transit now. Well, go ahead, Mary. I just want to make a comment. That the new addition to our staff, I'm so happy he's going to be working with Systems Development. Yes. His experience with rails is very impressive to me because I look forward to the day we have that here in Savannah. So. This is got a big challenge ahead of you, young man. Mm -hmm. We'll work with you. Well, uh, 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 as was just said uh, when Priscilla just mentioned, and it's been a long, long time before, uh, you know, we had a good system <coughs> working and a lot of progress and all of that. And of course, we have our leader, uh, you know, with us, with Chad, has done a wonderful job. And uh, of course, all of his staff that work really good and uh, are getting out there to help us, uh, you know, to be uh, one of the best, uh, uh, you know, that we have in addition to them, uh, the staff and all, we can see that, uh, that our legal staff does a good job also. I have to mention him because anytime you bring something up, um, he goes into it and brings the information which is important that we can handle things on a legal basis and all. May I interject that one of the great pleasures now is that I hear about things before they're done rather than after. And I must add that our board, we've got one of the best boards uh, in the state of Georgia, you can see in some of those other counties where they have, uh, you know, the transportation systems and all, we are far ahead of them uh, in many, many respects. So thank all of you for your participation and the things that you have done to make us in a, a great transportation system that will get better. I do have to add, our staff, in terms of the drivers and the safety records that we maintain, yes, that keeps sure. us on a lot of financial problems yes. and payouts. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, time. anything else? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, rode, I rode in many bereaves over my lifetime, and I decided to ride to represent Cat this past weekend. And I want to thank the staff for whoever put together that card. Or who did my name? You come right who over here. <laughs> <laughs> you and, but look, I represent the board on the weekend, and, and, and I really enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun. I had some phone calls asking me if I'm still a commissioner. Are you working with the cat board and uh, are you no longer? I got quite a bit. So I just wanted to let y'all know that I enjoyed it. Just and and yeah. his, comment, <laughs> his comment also, I'm multi talented. Multi talented. Multi -talented. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't get to the tailgate this time. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. If you, 
Did you get that? No, you get no I have other things going on. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Appreciate right. everybody coming, and we will be on board with our regular uh, meeting for the different committees. Uh, yes, sir. Next month. <laughs> They may have five minutes, okay, we'll time that. But uh, 